Welcome everyone to the Ontology Summit 2020. Today is the 25th of March, 2020. And the session today is the first of a several sessions where we attempt to synthesize all the various ideas and uh, discussions that have taken place already in the uh, Ontology Summit, going all the way back to September. Um, and uh, the topic is knowledge graphs. So today it's an open discussion. And what I'm hoping for is a spirited debate uh, to, to open this uh, attempt to synthesize uh, all of this very large amount of material. So actually, I just noticed I don't have my, I don't have my uh, chat room up on a different machine. But feel free to unmute and begin the conversation. Unmute and holler away. Yes, we're being recorded. So Ken, Ram here. Hi, Ram. Can you hear me? I guess so. So, yes. what what are we trying? What's what are we trying to achieve by CoB today? End of this meeting. Is well, it the all, all kind of thing, or what, do you have a kind of an agenda here? Uh, no. Uh, there's no specific agenda other than to begin the effort to produce a communique. So what we need to do is float ideas about what topics should be addressed in that uh, communique. Yeah, so for that, I think we have, we do have uh, the, you know, the initial outline that you produced. Uh, when's how and those kinds of things in there and then we yeah you can do a top-down kind of thing saying that this is what the main thing is all about the, the the summit and here are the topics that are being discussed and here is a summary of uh, you know one has to summarize the uh, speakers deliberations okay on each one or, or whatever they said and I think there's a lot of stuff which was said on chat that needs to be summarized too. So there's another problem uh, because there are two things around here. The speakers have said something and the audience said something. So the, and the speakers replied to that. There's a lot of synthesis that needs to be done there, I believe, presumably. Is that what you're looking for? Yes, I mean, we have a basic outline. Yeah. Uh, yeah. First question is, uh, of course, does that work for us? I think it's worked pretty well, but uh, I would like uh, to hear from other participants today. This is a little different this time around than other times. That's what I think. Um, maybe Ken, if you brought up that um, outline so that we had it on the screen, that would help. I am going to try to do that right now. Someone has to share. I'll uh, definitely get it up and share it just a moment. So while you're doing that, I think the interesting thing for me has been in all of these presentations, uh, which are very high quality, um, that there's so much that is not new. And it, it's more that we need to take everything to a different quality level than um, then that there's something specific that is, um, um, you know, innovative or uh, hadn't been thought before. Um, and I think, uh, so I know we've kicked that idea around since this topic was first brought up is, well, there's nothing new here, but, but that sort of is the, so I think in my mind that has moved front and center as the, um, as the interesting part that it isn't new, that any of these elements um, you know, has been around in the past, but the industrializing this, um, you know, taking it up to a robust 
a level of maturity is the um, interesting challenge. And I, I hope that in this process we can, um, you know, do a better job of relating data and theory and ontologies and, um, you know, all, all of these things, um, which to some extent have, um, have not been mature yet. Hopefully this can force us to mature everything while we're maturing an insight into knowledge graphs. Sounds good. So I brought up the uh, the outline. So to what extent have we covered all of these so far? What would you say? Looking at the schedule here, you'll notice we've had two whences, one why, and four hows. Although one can, I mean, certainly the talks have covered aspects of the other questions. Uh, in a couple of weeks, we should begin the use cases series. So perhaps right now, let's look more carefully at whence, why, and how. I think there's also an argument to be made <clears throat> along with um, that with what John Soa has been saying that, um, that we need to go back to the language of the 70s to um, sort of get to the mundane issues um, that persist, but now they have been overlaid with um, generations of marketing and um, you know hype, even re talking about knowledge rather than data to some extent is a um, diversion. Um, and, you know, in my, in my mind, <clears throat> excuse me, the, um, we, it would be a good discipline to, to see what we could um, do just with the language of the 70s or early 80s and see, um, you know, I, I assume that I will get pushback from people who say, oh no, ontologies are very well understood and they have a particular meaning, whereas to me it it really might be better to say we should um, just talk about um, schemas or conceptual schemas, that kind of thing. Mm. Well, <laughs> nobody's arguing yet, but maybe those people aren't online yet. But uh, I think this, you know, it's like the challenge from the second summit or um, I think it was the second one that said we need to operationalize these ideas. Um, I, and if, going back to the language from the 70s, I'm thinking of that as, um, as operationalizing them in terms of, you know, we're, we're using data, we're processing it, we're, um, we're trying to achieve interoperability, we're trying to analyze it and derive insights. Um, I guess this was to some extent reflected in the first graphic that you put together, Ken, with the, um, uh, the flow from data to business value. Um, oh. Yes. I wonder if you should bring that up. Um, Let me see if uh, I can find that just a moment. So knowledge graphs and ontologies and semantics and uh, intelligence and learning, those all are related, but they can, they can become stumbling blocks um, if, if we don't operationalize them in terms of um, you know, methods applied to data.
let me this was down. Janet? Yes. This is Ram here. Yeah, you, you kind of brought out a point that is uh, things have been said for a long time about knowledge graphs, ontologies, and things like that. So I guess uh, your key question here is that what's new? What, what, are, what are we trying to impart around here? So let's say people read the communique, what are they going to get it at the end of the day? Is that, is that the concern here? Or is the issue not the concern? Um, th that's a good way of framing it. I guess yeah. um, the, what I want, what I'm, what I'm saying is I think we can concretize and operationalize um, these terms, um, which are, you know, to some extent, marketing hype terms that have multiple meanings so they're uh, they're hard to pin down um if we like with this that graph there the um uh the graphic with the data rules and actionable information you know if we could concretize um a lot of this terminology and i see john is adding in the chat um uh and david eddie you know metadata um logic now, if we can show where all of these um, terms and concepts play parts in going, in starting with <clears throat> data, um, using rules and resulting in actionable information, something like that. I, I think it's a really good opportunity to show that, um, anyway, maybe John should take over here if you have something to say, yeah. John. Oh, well, I, I basically agree that uh... And the point I was trying to make is that there are lots and lots of different words that people have used, and uh, they're not going to be happy unless we accept their words for what they do. But what we can do is use logic and ontology as the fundamental terms and relate everything in terms of them. And one thing that I really like is the uh, DOL standard. That's the, by OMG, and I mentioned that last week. And uh, they have a very nice diagram that they standardized and there's a free open source software available for relating all of the uh, uh, versions of the semantic web all those different logics plus the uh, diagrams of the uml diagrams translated and relating all of those to common logic so common logic is the foundation for all of them and uh, one of the things that i've been uh, working on is a very nice little uh, notation that um, can be that is looks very similar to predicate calculus but it can be used to uh, as subsets you can have subsets of that for RDF OWL uh, and uh, rule ML and uh, then the full and first order logic and common logic and you can uh, relate any of those to your knowledge graphs so that you have a common framework for relating everything. Okay, um, so the first point you made there was, was relating ontologies to logic, and I think that's great. And the, the other stuff is good too, but getting back to that um, ontologies and logic, um, I think it might be better if we don't use the word ontologies well, we obviously want to use the word ontologies, but we should emphasize, as you're saying, that, that we're talking about logic. When we're, um, right. when we're, when we're saying ontologies, we're, that's a fancy word for saying logical models. The, and, another interesting thing, yeah. Yeah, and, and then this morning, I sent a note uh, to uh, Ontolog Forum about uh, models. And this was um, putting together some of the, I uh, referred to comments by Matthew West, by Barry Smith and by uh, Chris Partridge and related all of those to say, well, uh, we can ta relate all of these in terms of models. And the word model is used everywhere in many senses, but we can focus on relating them to one another so that we can relate the data models to the logical models, to the physical models, to the engineering models. And basically, any of those models can be represented in mathematics and logic so that models become a popular term. 
Also, I think a schema is good and conceptual schema, we can relate those and say a conceptual schema is, is, a, is a way of relating your data models uh, to your uh, um, engineering models by means of your fundamental concepts of logic and ontology. So you can relate everything and put it all together in a big, uh, a big system. Yes, that's great. I think that's great. Models, um, I think models should definitely be um, sort of a, a cornerstone here. Um, and uh, and represent, then representations um, can be a complement. Um, and what was I going to say? Something about the, <clears throat> maybe, let's see, does anyone else have their hand up? Todd, okay. Maybe I'll let Todd speak instead. Um, a question I had, John, you were listing all those models. I didn't hear a listed a semantic model. And is oh, a semantic, semantic model... A logic model, model it, is a semantic model. Okay, but is a semantic model necessarily a logical or has have a logical representation? We okay. would like it to, of course, but must it be the same? If you can, the idea is that you can take any model as a very rough sort of thing, and if you represent it in logic, that pins it down to make it very precise. On the other hand, you can start no, with something doesn't. like a vague mental model okay. and then systematically, step by step by step, refine well, it until you have it yeah, down yeah. to something you can state in mathematics. Okay, well, there's a gap then. And the gap I'm providing, I'm putting on my Tarski hat here, is the interpretation. I can have all the wonderful logical models with all the wonderful symbols, you know, whatever you like, but when people go to use it, what are they going to do? How are they going to use it? How are they going to interpret it? So there's a gap there that we need, I think, would be helpful to mention in some form in, in, in that if you have a well-developed ontology as a basis for your knowledge graph, then you have constrained the potential models or the potential interpretations that well, you yes, have. Well, yes, yes, yes. The answer is yes. Okay. A, 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 a semantic model is an ontology plus a logic when, when it's formal, but you can start with, you start with your mental models. That those are the things yeah. you start with and you relate those to language and what you see and everything else. That's your starting point. Mm -hmm. And then successive steps yeah. of refinement, 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 you uh, translate them into engineering models, data models, and uh, uh, the uh, various things you implement on your computer system. But the fundamental semantics always remains logic and ontology and you have a Tarski style model for that when you when you finally get it down to make it precise i would say the fundamental semantics are people the well stop uh, i'll drop the word fundamental okay, okay. you have people models that are yeah. mental models those yeah, are the it, starting point that's what people see and that's yes. what language is related to so language yes. is related directly to and from your uh mental models and then everything else gets refined if you want an engine uh, a physical model you get all the ontology from physics but then you need an engineering model where you might take approximations you know that mm -hmm. the fundamental model is quantum mechanics on the other hand uh, for driving a car you can make do with uh, Newtonian mechanics yes okay but right. I just want to make well, the point that we should have the notion of inter interpretation floating around there somewhere right and Todd I think in that last graphic um, which we don't really need up at, at the moment but the um, there was the rules included interpretation and evaluation, and then the actionable information at the end, um, you know, communication um, by the system to humans. So it, your interpretation then, um, there is machine, there's encoded interpretation in the rules, and then there's ultimate interpretation when it gets out to the people and they, yeah. Well. There's a chain in there. You've got to be mm -hmm. careful. There's a chain. And again, I'm saying we're starting from humans. I don't think chipmunks want to participate. But we have humans doing stuff. And John pointed out what they have there, what are usually called conceptual models. Maybe you don't want to use that term. But people's own notions. And then they want to represent them in a way that a machine can use them. And then there may be some interaction of humans with that machine representation. And then that machine or that human, if you like, input with respect to that machine representation that a human's created initially, then may get output back for human interpretation. So there's a chain of, of interpretations going on there. So even yes. though you may have a wonderful ontological model, when it gets 
used in a particular information system, uh, the people using it may not have the same interpretations as was used to or intended when it was developed. So the result, you know, there's a chain of interpretations going on. And so the result may not be the same as what the people or the engineers intended in the first place. So there's, right. some, you know, okay. Yeah, that's good. That's better. That's better. That's, so that's the, the very simple graphic that we started with there, the data rules, um, actionable information should have loops and, uh, you know, the possibility of um, chains, as you're saying, yeah. generation. You know, if you, if you have your ontology and you put up a, a, a UI that's based on your ontology and there's a label there that says, you know, kumquat, maybe the person who has to interact with that user interface doesn't properly understand what a kumquat is and they enter data under that label and then the result comes out and you say, why did this person enter, you know, um, asparagus under kumquat? Right. If we if we cross this graph with the one that um, from yeah. John's presentation with the human human interfaces, machine interfaces, various languages. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. I'll be quiet now. Well, one of the it seems like one of the things that we really need is like a common implementation that would allow us, you know, like psych was this. I don't want to start start a talk on psych or anything, but for you know, now we have HETS, the heterogeneous uh, kit, and uh, so I've used HETS a little bit, and it's I, I don't necessarily um, I can't interact with it yet. You know, um, well, where I was going with that is that now, now we have uh, a, a new issue that's happened since like 2010 or or somewhere in the semantic web. Uh, progression. We we still haven't had a, a common tool, other than uh, say protege, to like look and, and work with these models. But also, we don't have a common query system, where we can we can surely know that if we are building this ontology and we're building a piece of software, that we can maintain it, uh, like you know whatever the uh, the data is going to be, and have like say if we needed a natural language interaction with that model that we're sort of talking about, kumquat to asparagus, um, we, sit, we still end up, we need a tool or a piece of software that's gonna let us uh, work with it on a human level. And I know that's up to us to do, but uh, I'm saying that I, I wish right now that, that we had a way to know that we, that when we build it, these things that we're gonna have a sort of common framework besides HETS, and HETS is good, but um, that we all feel like we can use it. And I don't just mean from the natural language level or anything like that. I just mean from the logical state uh, my software, I want to be able to do something besides a Sparkle query to back and forth to work with the data. I want to do something more like it closer to a site query or uh, a good piece of software with SNARK, Stanford, um uh, uh automated reasoning toolkit uh automated anyway something that we can count on software wise that's going to be working with our ontologies now i know that's um but i just want to say that's i feel like a bottleneck in our society you know of us here right now that we need something that 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 we can do something besides just maintain an ontology but actually work with it on a deeper level than I feel like Sparkle would give us, for example. Well, so. that's again uh, why I point to that DOL project, that DOL standard, that they have standardized the mappings from every one of those uh, uh, um, uh, semantic web ontologies to uh, TPTP, which is the thousands of problems for theorem provers, for which yeah. there are many, many available, super fast uh, uh, theorem provers that, that have been developed by uh, um, and are free open source all over the place. And we can also use every tool that anybody has used for SQL or or uh, Sparkle or any of the or any of the uh, 
uh, UML diagrams, anything that you can represent in a UML diagram can be mapped to common logic. Anything you can represent in the semantic web can be mapped to uh, common logic. So that gives us a basis for defining things. There are also mappings available for translating among all of these things so that basically you can translate from any of those things to common logic, but you can only translate back for a subset. And so that basically you can define everything in common logic. You can refer to that as for all of your definitions. And uh, uh, I added some lines that what we can do is have, have a, uh, an ontolog project for defining an, a glossary. And the glossary can go up on the uh, uh, ontolog web uh, page and we can develop that over time and in in that glossary we have the ontology and logic as the foundation and then uh in terms of which you can define everything else and i certainly agree with todd that for human for human language our thinking is based on mental models that map to and from the world that and especially the uh, vision that the, uh, the things we see in the real world, those are the fundamental terms that an, a child learns before the age of three. And it's that basis that's used throughout lifetime for building all, everything else on top. Uh, Robbie has his hand up. Yeah. Can you hear me? Sure. We can hear you. Can, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Good. So I am seeing a diagram that John and every many others have alluded to some elements in this diagram of common logic. So, and also John keeps referring to this uh, new standard many of us have not used, but are Mm. are hearing more and more. He has repeated it a couple of times. So if we take these two elements, can we construct knowledge graph? Or can we define what people are using as knowledge graphs using these two? Okay, any, anyone try, want to try answering that? Uh, okay, I think the you, other... Yeah, I can sorry. take it... Go um, ahead, if Janet. You, yeah, if you go back to the other uh, diagram, Ken. Will do. Um, there. Okay, so by knowledge, um, I think people, people are hoping for actionable information, uh, and that relates to the question that Paul Tyson just um, wrote in the chat. Um, if your boss says make make a knowledge graph they want actionable information um that and the graph form um has i think two connotations one is that it should be um human readable that that it you should be able to see something in it see clusters see hierarchies see um you know see relationships so graph is a representation form knowledge is some kind of fused data and rules that will give me actionable information. Um, on the technical side of knowledge graph, it's more the um, you know, the way the data is collected and stored. So I think that's what we found. On the one hand, there's the um, human interface aspect of knowledge graph, and there's the um, collection and storage when you have sparse data. Um, knowledge is sort of I, a weasel word. Yeah. I see now, I see some connection between the last slide that was shown on common logic and what you are saying. Mm -hmm. Okay, go back. Um, uh, and I, I also see that with this little smart uh, putting together of things, we can weave what we mean by knowledge graph in this forum at least, by combining these two elements together, mm -hmm. along with one more thing, which John has been saying on the chat, which is a vocabulary or glossary. So if we have elements of this graph, 
namely common logic that you are showing and the one that janet referred to the previous one and if we have one more item namely glossaries of course you imply glossary and vocabulary in your uh, other slide can the other slide please the one. the one that yeah is there a mention explicitly of the vocabulary or glossary here if not then we need to weave that into and combine these two slides and see if we can define knowledge graphs or at least sketch knowledge graphs mm. it has to have common logic and thereby some notion of ontology and semantics and uh what you are describing in these three elements mm -hmm. uh, on the current slide uh the um the, yeah, the only you're... word i have a comment on is the actionable information let it be passive or active but let there be an information which is accessible rather than limiting it to actionable only right uh, actionable the actionable framing there is to show that it's you know it has to deliver um business value that that's a good way of um of disciplining um the so you know so this isn't just an abstract exercise it has to um communicate to humans in a way that they can um make a difference it has to be you know which was Bates, one of Bateson's definition of information, it's a difference that makes a difference. Um, now, and the, John's, can I say, John's other graph from, uh, based on Peirce and the UDA, the, those other graphs about how data and knowledge is used to um, make inferences and, um, uh, you know, take action, um, those, those show that what we're talking about here, the, the context that we need to sort of stabilize and and present something you know, something authoritative that will help people understand the use of data and rules to um, derive actionable information um, is um, you know transcends the use of technology. It's it's universal. It you know, arguably is universal for all organisms, um, but so the the knowledge part and todd raised a good question about you know how do you knowledge versus um uh you know information and um what part is knowledge that's a that's a, sort of a tricky question that we'll need to address but i think in knowledge graphs you have two aspirational words people want it to have knowledge and they want it to be in graph form um and well, uh, so so if we go, I mean, Janet. So if we take your line of thinking, then we need some sources of this knowledge and data. Part in your slide showed it, and right now Ken is showing my slides, which uh, are so showing sources of data or information, or language or whatever databases. John says we must construct some kind of conceptual models using that. And he also says vocabularies are important or glossaries are important. So this transformation of this all through search and reasoning is what gives us the knowledge graph. And kindly go one slide up, Ken, if you can. And that is what we depicted one more. This this is the uh, this is a very simplified knowledge uh, sources on the left some way of sifting sorting that information reasoning and results thinking if remember, there was even a better better um, graphical depiction of knowledge graphs by one of the speakers I can show you but i think in my slide sent after this one i captured that graphic so right. how do we how do we converge for our communique where well, we will yeah. have to address we will have to address what is knowledge graph uh, well let's say let's say that let's say we could have three 
graphics. One would show that sure. for all, and, and this is just for, for making this one point, for all, um, all um, informed action requires collecting data, drawing inferences, and um, you know, gaining some actionable information and acting. So that's sort of a generic for all um, organisms or all, all people, let's say. Um, then when, when people were using machines, then they would have the machines um, collect or store the data. They would enter the data somehow. They would have um, you know, some processing done on the data. They could draw inferences. They would gain actionable information and then they would act on that. Starting in the in what John in John's presentation, he showed there was a challenge of interoperation between these activities of data inferencing action, where you you want to figure out how to get these different um, machine assisted um, you know uh, efforts to draw. Um, in, in, you know, to, for informed action, you want to have those different activities be um, interoperable and more efficient, and more effective. I think that is that's sort of the the three part way of looking at the challenge that John said, you know pointed to um, from the '70s. I I think of it as being from the '70s. I don't know if that's right, John, but um, everything that we've been talking about since then is sort of a refinement or a an effort to take different stabs at how to do that better, how to do better data collection, storage, um, uh, you know, modeling, uh, interoperability, standards, schemas, uh, ontologies. Um, but we're still, we're always working with that same flow of data inferencing um, actionable information. Um, yeah. Gary, Gary um, posted a, an David Eddy has a lot of David Eddy has a lot of comments on what Janet said and what I said. So m maybe he wants to make a comment. I don't know. There's David and there's Gary. Go ahead, Gary. Or I will go. Go um, ahead, David. You're I'm going, David. I have have had the benefit of having worked for a guy who was an expert in what was long, long, long ago known as the Central Data Dictionary, a concept that has yes. disappeared. The word is uh, used for something entirely differently. Back in the day when computers were big, expensive, unreliable, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, the idea of having a bill of materials, a specialized bill of materials database was unchallenged because manufacturers worked from people who made physical goods work from bills of materials components subcomponents subcomponents etc etc um, and so that rose the central data dictionary and i had a ringside seat as that that concept was killed in the late 80s by john you should log off now. I'm going to say bad things about IBM. Uh, having, I'm an IBMer too, but IBM's AD cycle effort in the late 80s absolutely totally killed off the uh, Central Data Dictionary, along with no. That's uh, that's I was uh, I was working on the standards processes, uh, and the group standard processes that was working on the data dictionaries in the 1990s, and I was representing IBM. And one of the things that uh, caused it to collapse is uh, the huge amount of uh, conflict among different uh, standards. One of the, in fact, the, uh, the enemy of the IRDS, this is a uh, project which was developing that standard, was uh, Oracle. Because the last thing they, Oracle, because at that time, Oracle was the dominant relational database company. And the last thing they wanted was <laughs> A systematic translation from one system to another. They never, they did not want to lose their monopoly and anything that would cause, uh, and that would enable anybody to move a database from one uh, 
uh, one company to another company was forbidden, and right. uh, the other, th and so the whole thing basically collapsed then, and uh, collapsed around 1992. Right, right. And I, I had a ringside seat as people would call in to my boss, not to me because I didn't know anything, but. Uh, uh, <laughs> It was uh, quite the ride, and and then also the rise of distributed computing, uh, desktop computers, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, now everybody's their own IT department, and they don't they don't have to have any discipline. They can just do whatever they want in spreadsheets. And getting back to some kind of controlled glossaries, uh, terminology dictionaries. What does this word mean? In what context? is uh i see is the central issue what we're struggling with here yeah but the glossary is not for uh the the, the users the glossary is for the people who uh develop the tools that map from one to another and there's never going to be uh any standard set of tools there's going to be an open inventory open invention of tools going off in every possible direction you can imagine, and there's no way to control it. But what you can do is to establish some uh, uh, methods for relating one to another. And basically, natural language is going to be there forever, and people's mental models are going to be there forever. And if you want to call that fundamental, fine, that's fundamental. And then there's also uh, going to be logic and ontology as formalisms at another extreme. And uh, the way to relate the and the basic thing we need is a way of systematically relating everything to everything else. And knowing that we're never, ever going to uh, have on uh, standards that everybody is going to adopt. You'll always have people who want to protect their own little fiefdom. Yes, but we could, that can be worked around, or worked with, worked with. Um, right, but, but to some extent, let's, I think we should take some um, perspective from what Spencer was doing last week. The, we can, at an abstract level, we can define uh, like this, this basic, um, informed action cycle that I'm talking about. We can, we can define that as applying in all cases. We can define elements that will be present. There will be some source of data. There will be some inferencing. Uh, but we cannot, we can't standardize the content. Uh, and the, um, he didn't get into the bite-sized ontologies. Maybe that's what um, John is talking about more. Um, you know, they're, they're promoting the idea of having more, um, more local ontologies and not trying to um, standardize them in advance, that, that you, you can only standardize at a certain level of abstraction. And if you can't standardize at that level of abstraction, that's a big uh, accomplishment. Um, the, uh, you know, so, but then you give up on the idea of trying to standardize the glossaries per se, or even achieving, you know, um, interoperation or integration you know what you want is interoperation rather than integration as john would say that you want to figure out methods for supporting interoperation um you're you you do not want to mandate integration in advance so uh, this I, is a yeah, I, I completely agree with oh. janet but i want to emphasize that the glossary is not I'm not design, saying that we need that glossary as a standard i'm saying that we need that glossary as uh, to explain how these words are being used right now in uh, 2020. And exactly. that uh, yeah. means that what we need to do is say, here is this word uh, that people have been using, here is this word people have been using, and then we have various endpoints where we can uh, relate everything. So we can relate everything to common logic by using the DOL standard, which takes all of the things of the semantic network plus uh, the uh, uh, plus the uh, SQL, plus the uh, UML diagrams, and it maps all of those to one another and down to common logic. So that gives us one firm endpoint that we can relate things. The other endpoints we have are people's <coughs> mental models, and there is as, as, there are as many different mental models as there are human beings on the planet. So, but what we can do is 
us is uh, define the words, the words that people commonly use. These are the words that are used in linguistics and logic and philosophy and psychology that relate the words that people are using today for relating the many different uh, systems that people use to, uh, to one another. So uh, this is Gary. If I could work in an idea or two, I want to see what people think of this. Can you hear me okay? My Wi-Fi is the strongest. So we have, a, we have 15 minutes or something like that. I hear a lot of interesting things, some of which is captured in the notes. I would like to propose and see what people think of the idea of forming some little, little committees to work on this so that there are various people here who want to talk uh, about the definitions for knowledge graphs and what exactly we mean is the issue of how it relates to ontologies or logic and so forth. We could come up with a list of topic areas and people who would volunteer to work on this. You, know, you might need two or three people, uh, possibly, uh, to work on this to flesh out for the next synthesis something and we could come back with a little bit more. So that's, that's one part. The other part, which Ken, I think, was pointing to was my little posting at 12.30 uh, uh, on um, some issues. Uh, we're going to hear from use cases in the near future, and probably use cases are going to tell us a little bit about some of you know, where we are and some of the challenges. I typed in some examples of, uh, from my potentially co-partner, Amit Sheff. Remember, he was going to be the one who was going to talk a little bit about the history of knowledge graphs. Well, he has an article uh, uh, about that, and I posted the link in there. And at the end of the article, after going through the use cases, he says, well, here are some of the challenges and issues going forward. And I just have seven on there, but we don't need to go through them. There's probably a doubling, easily, we easily double that. The point here is that there might be a group that would focus on this type of thing, which is what are the issues going forward with knowledge graphs uh, that we want to make sure that's part of our, our uh, communique. So that's my two ideas. Uh, what do people think about that? Well, Gary, I would say I strongly agree, and I would say the glossary is the way to do it. The, the thing is that words are what people use for, for relating what they're doing to uh, what other people are doing. And the committee would be simply, uh, and they, there could be multiple committees f dealing with different aspects of what goes into the glossary. The glossary would be a record of what everybody's, uh, of the words that people are using to talk to one another. And uh, it wouldn't be, uh, the, these words don't ne necessarily have to have a formal definition in logic, but they need to be able to re represent in ordinary English uh, what people are talking about when they're using the word schema or knowledge graph or anything else or, or uh, owl or whatever. When they're talking about ontology and any of these terms, committees represent different parts and what you need to, is some somebody uh, – some group that is going to take these words and uh, when the discussions reach a, some sort of stable point, put them into the official glossary up uh, on the uh, uh, Ontolog web. Okay, good. I, I, maybe I should have used the phrase work group. Uh, to Actually, a group of people who would work together uh, over the next week and report back to us at the next, I think we have the next synthesis session following this. Is that right, Ken? Next week is a, it's also synthesis. Yeah, so it'd be nice to have some real work that would be good input to our communique next week. And if we could form some work groups, maybe that's a better term, on particular topics. Now, I know one of these is, you know, what is a knowledge graph? How does it relate to things like logic? That definitely seems to be a lot of what has been discussed here. But people here could propose right now in the chat what they think the work groups we need are and then that they would be interested in maybe being part of, at least want to be, have somebody be part of. It's great, Gary, call for volunteers. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that always leads to some silence, but hopefully it's thoughtful silence. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm gonna, uh, I should nominate Ravi to talk, uh, to do some work on what does it mean to be a knowledge graph? He's always bringing this up, trying to clarify things. And he, I'd like to capture that in you know, one particular place, the best thoughts we have. Ravi, are you up for that?
He's got his hand up, but yeah, he's... I unmuted myself. Hello, yes. Gary. Yes. Ah, uh, uh, what the actual assignment is? Can you kindly summarize it once more? Well, I, I, I was, am. I will say what I think you have been driving at, which is you are often asking people, what do they mean by a knowledge graph? What is the best definition of that? We definitely have to have that, some write up on that. Since you keep coming to this, I thought you might be a good person uh, with others to work on that. But how do we work together so that we stay converged on achieving at least three, as uh, Janet said, at least three views of knowledge graph, well, if not uh, you, you, you more than a, views? You, you form a Google Doc and you get people to input their ideas to begin with and then you have an editor who actually goes through and for next week sort of tries to create a summary of where they think they are yeah. with that Google Doc. How does that yeah. sound? I am writing here my, if you don't want to post it to the forum, of course that is the, that is the best source where others can also learn your thinking. But if yes, you don't, you then know. kindly look at the chat. You could invite Sorry. people Wrong. to come to your, you could invite people on the forum by announcing where the Google Doc is and inviting them to make comments on it, perhaps if they want to edit and so forth. I'm just looking for a useful way of moving forward between now and next week so that we are, we have something to consider. And then of course, both of these leveraging into our communique. Hey, Ravi. Um, it's an excellent idea. I'm just uh, trying to send my email, which I did. I did on the chat board. I sent my email. Ravi? Uh, that is a, uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. There may be a delay though. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I just put my email there in addition to on to log forum where everybody can see what you have and I welcome, I will certainly make every effort to synthesize or uh, identify same, similar or different views on this topic of defining knowledge graph. That is the track I think you all have assigned to me right in the beginning. Yeah, by I mean, subscribing to it, what are knowledge graphs. I wouldn't call it a track, uh, although in the old sense, it maybe it would have been a track. Whatever, what a topic, topic. Yeah, so, so John is obviously a, capable of doing something on the topic. He talked about the glossary. Janet has definitely talked about certain things, and David's talked about certain things. Each of them might form a, a, a group, a work group, or they might be a work group of one if they wanted to be between now and, and later. Uh, I would hope they would come up with a topic. I've mentioned the, the one about issues going forward. I might try to flesh out that a little bit between now and then, and maybe involve uh, Amit Chef, who is the, really the author behind what I put in there to help with that. But others may have other topics that they think need to be synthesized based on what they've heard and part of our communique. Uh, just to balance the, uh, I, I very much welcome, I agree, unless Ken and others have objection to this mode where we form some kind of small two, three, two, three people kind of community, but whatever comes to me on through uh, a forum by saying, Ravi, capture this or something, I will capture, synthesize to best my of my knowledge and present you next week. We have a lot of hands up here. Are they still all up for talking? So shall I, shall I first take down my hand? I want to take it down with one comment. I just want to tell you that I visualize future where, oh, petabytes or larger repositories are in both active and archive mode for knowledge to be accessible if required. If not, maybe someday later, they also become active and serve the knowledge or information where it is needed. So a world 
with some buried intelligence in it, a system uh, or set of systems, super systems serving knowledge where it is required, either actively or passively. So those would okay, be knowledge let's... repositories. But would they all need to access knowledge graph is not clear to me. So let's get these groups, initial set of groups. So Ravi, you're running one group. David, you're running a group. How should I? I'm I trying to capture people, but they should come up with their own topics if they want to do something. It's up. Yeah, I just yeah. tell There's, me what your topic yeah, I think is. We have those uh, hands up, but let's go through the, uh, the, 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 the chat. Is anyone seeing them? Yes, yes, I'm yeah. seeing them. I took mine down. Yeah, so they're the rest of the things because I'm waiting for the other two hands to go down before I make my comments. Hi. This is Leah. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we yes. Hear you. Okay, great. Um, so I, as I mentioned in the chat, I'm fairly new to this um, to this field. I'm a I'm a research librarian um, by training. So I guess from my perspective, and I had mentioned this, and David responded, this would be good. You know, kind of someone is greener on the greener side i would want to read through and i'm able to read through definitions and any work that others are doing kind of from a clarity and um you know kind of accessibility standpoint as far as understanding for people who might be new to the field or um need to approach this information and then i also wanted to mention i know that there's been a lot of talk about having a common um place for I guess, knowledge graphs, ontologies, information, et cetera. Um, and I know there are several efforts that are, you know, um, some foundries um, by, you know, led by NIST, there's, um, and kind of on the financial end, there's EDM Council's FIBO. Um, and then I wanted to mention Bartok Org, uh, which is a basal register of Fisari ontologies and classifications. Um, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with that, but that, I guess that's a place where people have tried to pull together records of different um, types of knowledge, representation, knowledge, um, you know, classifications, etc. Um, and kind of provide a little bit of metadata on them. There's a little bit of organization of content by discipline. Um, so I wanted to offer that and also just offer up I'm coming from more of a social science perspective. Um, a lot of my work has been in social science, public policy, and not so much in hard science, although I have done some um, like clinical biomedical research. So I guess I would just throw that out there as something to keep in mind. Um, I know that I guess ontologies or knowledge graphs have traditionally been seen as this very science heavy um, discipline and science heavy um, use case, but I, I think that there are a lot of different things that definitely are, could benefit from this type of work. And I just want you to, I would just say to keep that in mind or offer that to keep that in mind as we move forward. So I will put myself back on mute. Thank you for listening. Thanks. Very That's, good. That Thank sounds you. like a valuable contribution. Um, yes. So I'm, I'm seeing Robbie, Gary, and David as the leaders so far. David, so, you gave a lot of good comments. I will respond to them in due course through email or whatever. Email, please, Robbie. This is this is better. There are too many well, open I, threads. Well, I think something. Some of the things that have been said only John Sowa can summarize from his point of view uh, for us as a thought at least. But uh, Ram has something to say. Yeah, because um, I don't know the, the protocol we are following around here because there's hands going up there, someone is not saying anything. I'm just waiting third in the line. So who's monitoring this chat or how are we gonna do this? Because as a protocol, we need to kind of figure it out. Otherwise, uh, you know, uh, this is, we, we're gonna have a tough time managing the, the flow of conversation here. Uh, I think John and Janet have 
Yeah, John and Janet have their hands up, so I, I'm waiting for hands up, but they've already up. spoken. Um, I did want to say um, about the science side and the engineering models that um, models is the the nexus by which we bring in all of the mathematics that people have been talking about it, with relation to knowledge graphs. So on the one hand, we have um, logical models, and on the other hand, we have mathematical models. So so models is a very good and important nexus there. Um, I think that the the glossary will be, um, you know, it needs a standard, some kind of common reference. There in, with ontologies, there was hope that, well, we can refer to the world and everybody should agree what the world is, but that doesn't No, work. no, no. Yes. <laughs> Nobody agrees but, on what the world is. That's right. Yeah. But I think that people can agree on this basic pragmatic cycle that John, you presented for, with Peirce's um, you know, abduction, deduction, induction, oh, right. yes, yes, yes. action. You know, people can agree on that. That's why I keep saying the, you know, the data rules, actionable information, or the purse version of it, or the UDA version of it. I think that's what we need as a, as a reference point. And then we can array all of this terminology around it. And I'd be happy to work with you, John, on the glossary. Okay, um, fine. Using, using something, you know, some pragmatic cycle as as a core that you can use to uh, array things around okay well ram has been very patiently waiting um so i think so we should we give him get the floor. two hands down so that i can put my hand up yeah good okay <laughs> otherwise i'm waiting for it i i have a couple of quick comments one is that uh, ken uh, I think I remember that every year when we do this communique, you always come up with the first draft in a way, at least the outline, and request people to fill it up. And my suggestion is that by next week, you, you may want to come up with something like that, and we can always fill in. You, you got enough input so far at this time, I believe, okay? Otherwise, this input will keep going on and on. So instead, of, at this, we have to, at some point, uh, kind of uh, make a decision to go ahead and uh, my suggestion is that this may be a point for you to come up with something. And people can criticize that later on. That's a different issue. They can make changes. And the second thing is that this is my own personal issue is that I think that for these knowledge graphs and all to catch up, we need to kind of look at the standardization part of it. Okay? Because until then, uh, if the people will come with their own interpretations, own perspectives, and I don't know where things are going to go. So I will be willing to kind of at least put some thoughts together on where we are, uh, where we should be going in terms of standards. So if anyone is willing to pitch in, that should be fine. Standards would be very helpful. I don't think we've really had enough. Well, today, uh, can if I may, if I may interject today, John mentioned a standard without calling it to so. The glossary that he's mentioning is something like a programmer's handbook, which no, no, everybody is uses object management to... standard. And I mentioned that last week. I'll send a note to the uh, in uh, Montalog forum with the reference. Okay. Sorry. Continue, Ram. No, no, I'm fine. My hand is down, so I'm okay. So I will. Uh, I will make an attempt to start summarizing, but um, I mean, this session, I mean, I set up this additional synthesis session largely to, to get some more input from you so that uh, this process can begin. And I believe I've gotten a, a, a lot of comments on the chat. And of course the um, discussion at the session. And um, we have reached the end of the hour. So I think we should adjourn and start up again next week after the different groups have proposed some, uh, proposed some material. And I have also made an attempt to do some summarization. Okay, so hope to see you all next week 
at the next thank you so much session. thank you and in, in two Ken weeks and everybody in two weeks we will begin the uh, use cases track good thank you